Everyone, please join me in welcoming Brandon Bosma. Well, these are all their trisome 18 kids, which are not shown in the medical textbooks, only the ones that have died. Then why aren't these pictures shown as well? I was at, I got the Children's Star Hospital for a cardiologist, the person um, was fighting for a trisomy girl so she'd get a heart operation. Doctor absolutely refused, saying that all trisomy teen kids die so they can't get a heart operation. And that isn't right. If you look at the soft organization, there's a lot of people that have survived heart operations and basically that's lying to your patients, isn't it? I was also at the pediatric round and rounds and Genesis, a geneticist, they didn't have the latest research, and a nurse was in tears for 20 years. She only just held the trisomy teen babies in her arms and did nothing, because that's how she was taught. How hard it is to write a speech when you have a low IQ, and I have ADD. So I see good food, I see my friends here, and I get so distracted, it happens every single day of my life. We can choose to look at the negative or be thankful for what we do have. Unfortunately, that's not how the medical community was. And I was speaking about trisomy somewhere else. I met two women that were shocked because their doctor said that there was no survivors for trisomy 18. And that isn't true. All you have to do is look on social media. And one mother made what a doctor said he should, she should do. She did, unfortunately. Oh, this reminds me of a good old time. I was at my mother's genesis and she's, my mom asked her how she would advise her to um, what well she advised, and she said, abort, uh, Janessa said, abortion, because statistics show, I'm right here in the room, and I was eight years old at the time. That was so helpful. I signed claims to be close to 100% Down syndrome free, and that also includes trisomy 13 and 18. Remind me never to take a vacation to Iceland. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's happening here and around the world, unfortunately. And I'm, the trisomy 18 is the second largest abnormality, second to Down syndrome. But we're all the older trisomy kids. In that picture I showed you with trisomy kids, they're from everywhere except here in Canada. Where, I don't know where they all are, unfortunately. And I'm the only one with mosaic trisomy 18 in Canada that I know of. So where are all the other trisomy kids? Do you know anyone with trisomy 18? So it's, it's less human and less worthy of life because an extra chromosome doesn't kill you and you can learn a lot with the person that has an extra chromosome. Well, genetic discrimination is deadly. Um, we all deserve a chance at life. Well, I also have my own website, and the software organization has their own website, and I try to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Um, so, thank you so much for your great presentation. Um, I, uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm sort of curious about the reaction of medical professionals when they encounter the sort of thing that, that you have to say. Um, I wonder how much, how, so some of, I wonder if you sometimes get the reaction that, well, you survived and you're great, um, you, you know, you're doing, you're doing great, but many, many of these infants don't survive, so because it's so unlikely for them to survive, um, and, you know, maybe they think it's a very expensive treatment, they think the, the expected benefits aren't worth the expected costs, and I would have thought, you know, so I would think that in response to that, the natural response would be, we show lots of other medical procedures which are undertaken on older, you know, individuals who don't have this condition with similar survival rates and being able, and, and how we're willing to pay similar costs in those cases. So I, I was just wondering if the debate had kind of gone there um, when you've talked to others, and if so, if, if you've used the strategy that I was thinking where you sort of show similar survival rates with similar costs in other cases. I've not been able to have a chance to do that, but well, well, it's like, like you were saying, like, for survival rates, what if we got rid of uh, not doing cancer patients because in a few years they're just going to die, why are we prolonging their life? 
No, yeah, I think cancer might be a great, a great example um, of, of maybe some of these cases where the costs are comparable in this room. Yeah, yeah, but it's great stuff. Thanks, thanks so much. Dr. Forrest, speaking here at State Brand, and I just wanted to ask you, aside from what you talked about in your presentation, do you think that there are any other ways that just people can just get involved to try and help people that have this condition and try and change the really bad situation that we're in with the healthcare system where they don't even care for people like you because you're different. Are there any other ways, aside from what you've talked about, that we can all work together to try and bring some change to this really bad situation? Be uh, a voice to those who have no voice and speak up and spread awareness. How much do you value the life that you have? I value all life. Everyone's life. Everyone deserves a chance at life. I like a lot. Thank you I'm here. <laughs> would you wish for a normal life? Well, it would be nice if I was six foot seven, had muscles, and have everyone chasing after me. I'd be a three star. <laughs> but there's you can there's some things you can choose to look at the negative or be thankful for what you do have. So if anyone has any one last burning question, I'll be happy to take it. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, you, maybe the questions you were mentioning about, you know, did you face a lot of discrimination from peers growing up and were, you know, beyond the physicians lethally discriminating, you know, trying to lethally discriminate against you, or did you, did you, have you encountered a lot of discriminatory experiences or? Or has it, you know, have most most people in your life fortunately been, been decent and accepting them? Well, I've been discriminated my entire life, actually. I would, at one place I was volunteering, um, right now we're volunteering, they want me to do the grunt work, like put chairs away, clean up dishes, do all the stuff that's like the grunt work, and that's not my speciality. <laughs> and, and I was wanting to go on a trip, and this is all because you're, because you, you have a disability, we don't want to bring you on, we don't know what you're going to be like and everything. It had to fight for those things. If we were to, uh, some people have uh, proposed the idea of lowering minimum wage for people with Down syndrome um, so that they would be paid less for jobs, what would you say to that? Well, I, would, I wouldn't want to be, if I were in that situation, I wouldn't want to be paid less. I think that everyone should have the equal right to get yeah, to get the right pay that they need. Abilities, um, and that it often paints a very uh, bleak picture of, of, of what kind of life these people can have. And I know that there's some people, like I, I believe um, the photographer Rick Wadowdy, who uh, one of the projects he does is to take pictures of people with different genetic conditions and show that, hey, no, their lives are vibrant and worth living and really opposing that very sort of bleak textbook outlook on people's lives with these conditions. Is there, are there different, um, whether it's uh, publishers or medical bodies or, or different groups within the medical or educational community that should be, um, you know, advocated to or, or people that can be reached on these issues and, and, and pushed to be like, hey, provide a more balanced view of these outlooks, show people who um, have these conditions but are, but are you know, still normal human beings. I'm just going to answer that. And um, actually Rick uh, was able to take Brandon's picture and he was at the SOLVE conference and doing that and he's made just a profound difference in people's lives. And yes, what's happening is for parents, that's one of the big fights is going around to where you have uh, images like you have just seen and uh, statistics which are just terrible and just saying hey here are our children let's put these on and there has been some change made in some places so it's really uh, good to see that there is slow progress throughout but everything is very slow and unfortunately all parents have to really really fight no matter what it is, as Brandon was saying, something as simple as oxygen. And imagine if you were told all of a sudden, you know, just take your child home and die. 
And many times women who do prenatal screening, it's also a false positive and they end up making decisions that uh, later on they regret. We know one case where a woman was told that her child had all these defects. She ended up having an autopsy and the only thing wrong with the child was that it had a cleft palate. And uh, Brandon has a website and unfortunately every day we hear of stories from his website or I have a mosaic one and it's just horror stories that um, how their children are treated and not being able to get the same thing that is expected from everyone else. So change is slow. We certainly could use a lot of voices to add to ours and uh, things like this, hopefully one step at a time, that you'll walk away from here just saying that, hmm, maybe I have something to think about. Thank you, that was just Gloria Brandon's mom adding in a bit there. Um, so I think we're gonna wrap up the question